Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for our top five favorite series. This week we are going to be taking a look at the color green and I was so, so excited for this episode. I was like, yes, I got this. Greens, they're awesome. I use them all the time. And then when I sat down, I was like, oh my goodness, this is impossible. Um, the reason why is because a lot of the greens that I use every day are not actually what we would think of as green colors. And so it made putting together this list a little bit difficult. I also wanted to keep in tune with the rest of the series and give you mostly single pigment colors. And that's a little bit harder with green since a lot of times I prefer to mix my own. So today we're going to try and cover this list the best that I can. It is going to get a little weird in places and uh, I hope that you are okay coming along on this ride with me and let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we're going to take a look at the colors that we'll be using to mix today in the video. All of these are Daniel Smith colors except for the permanent yellow light is Emission Gold and the... Uh, Ultramarine is from Sennelier. All the others are Daniel Smith. We're going to be using Lemon Yellow, which is PY175, not PY3. Then we've got Permanent Yellow Light, uh, which is PY154. We've got Quinacridone Gold. Typically, I don't use this for my mixing videos because it is way too precious, but I had to for this one because uh, you'll see why in a little bit. Then we've got Quinacridone Burnt Orange that I apologize does not look right on this swatch, and that is because um, this picture was taken in terrible, terrible lighting. Our sun went away at like three o'clock today when a storm rolled in, so I didn't have much to work with. Then we've got Pyrrole Red, Carmine, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Green Shade, Burnt Sienna, and again, this is Daniel Smith's version, so it's going to be that brownish pinky Burnt Sienna rather than an orange Burnt Sienna. And then we've got Naphthamide Maroon and Neutral Tint. Now, I said that things were going to get weird today, so I need you to hang with me the best that you can, and I'm going to have a little bit more information at the end of the video on some colors that did not make it into this top five. Not really honorable mentions, but explaining why certain colors overrode the others. And now coming in at number five is a bit of an odd duck. We've got Toddy Dark Green from Pfeiffer Art Supply. I did a review on this company a while back. These are some handmade paints, and this pigment is PG8. Now, this is not a a widely available commercial color in watercolors, although it is used more in acrylics and oils, I believe. And uh, the only other manufacturer that I know of that carries this color is White Knights. I was waiting on a package before I did this video so I could see that one and compare it and see if um, the commercially available one was one that was worth putting on this list, but it hasn't arrived yet and I didn't want to delay the video. So you're getting this video as is, and I really, really tried to find another replacement for this color since it is so uncommon and it doesn't have very good light fastness. So, I mean, there, there are a lot of issues you could see with this color, but the reason it is on my list at number five is because the moment that I saw this color, I fell in love with it. It is a beautiful, deep middle tone of green that just has this luminosity to it that is so gorgeous. And you can see as we mix throughout the colors, we get a variety of light greens when we mix them with the yellow colors. Then you can see we get some beautiful teal turquoisey colors mixed with the blues and some gorgeous dark tones as well with both the naphthamide maroon and the neutral tint. So anyway, I love this color from Pfeiffer Art, the PGA. It's a beautiful color. I believe it was originally called Hooker's Green in the other paint mediums, um, and White Knights calls their version just plain old green. So uh, lovely color. I'm looking forward to getting White Knights and trying to see how that compares to the one I already have and uh, doing my own light fastness test to find out once and for all kind of what's up in that direction. All right, guys, I promise this is the last really crazy, weird thing that I'm going to throw in these videos. And I know I haven't done this yet to this point, but I promise I have a good reason for doing this. Coming in at number four are a selection of Daniel Smith Primatec colors. We've got Serpentine, Green Appetite, and Jadeite Green Genuine colors. And these are all beautiful mineral pigments from Daniel Smith that equally could have their own spots on this list. However, the way that this list is formatting, we mix them with different colors. We talk about how useful they are. And you guys, these colors are garbage at mixing. <laughs> I was so sad to realize that because I, I typically will use them on their own. And now I know why, because they are 
gorgeous standout colors, but when you start mixing them with other paints, they just go haywire and they make mud. So I put all three of them here at the number four spot because I cannot mix them with other colors without showing you a disaster on a piece of paper. So they're each beautiful in their own right, and I think they can be used straight out of the tube, or maybe with a little bit of extra yellow or blue, depending on which way you want to lean the specific color. But other than that, leave them alone and let them shine. Serpentine Genuine is the lightest of the three. This is a bright green that has a very like burnt sienna-ish type of sediment that separates out of the mixture and into the grooves of your paper. The Green Appetite Genuine is a darker middle tone of green that has kind of two interesting effects. It has a deep dark brown granulation that settles out of it, as well as in the lighter areas, you get this bright, almost like it almost looks unnatural, this bright, bright green color that kind of halos in the lighter areas and on your palette. Um, it looks like some kind of crazy synthetic thing, but promise it's completely 100% this one type of uh, mineral that Daniel Smith uses. Jadeite Green is going to round out this trio. It is the darkest and bluest of the bunch, and it also has a nice granulation pattern and uh, a lot of like a light bluish teal effect in some of the lighter areas as well. All right, we are walking into perfectly normal top five territory with our number three pick. Uh, and if you can guess my top three in which order I did it in, let me know in the comments below because it took me half of today to figure out what order to put these three in because they are all beautiful and gorgeous and I use them all equally. But coming in at number three is Perling Green. Now this is arguably one of the least green colors on the list because one, it has the pigment number for a black pigment, although that is just kind of something that was arbitrarily assigned to it and its mass tone, it does look quite dark and black, but when you tint it out, it is certainly a green color. Um, however, I find this color absolutely indispensable for mixing my dark shadowy areas, but starting off with those yellow colors, it makes a gorgeous green when you mix it with the permanent yellow light. Um, it's almost uh, as good as any sap green that you're going to find out of a tube, if not better. Moving down into the color mixed with the quinacridone burnt orange, it makes this stunning middle shade of brown that was really, really surprising. When you mix it with reds, it makes uh, dark purpley shadowy colors, which is just always phenomenal. Mixed with blues, you get deep, rich teals. And this is probably my favorite combination with them is these deep, moody teal colors. And then mixing into some of our darker earthy tones our naphthamide maroon and our neutral tint, uh, we're going to get some nice deep shadow colors. I particularly like the naphthamide maroon because it makes a deep dark purple. This is a color that you have probably seen pop up throughout my channel, throughout my painting, throughout the color spotlights when I would mix it with other colors on that series. And it is just increasingly more and more surprising as the years go on of my watercolor painting and what I have uses uh, for it in my applications. Alrighty guys, so who guessed it? My number two spot is Thalo Green Blue Shade, and me and Thalo Green Blue Shade go way back to my very first palette. I originally added this to my palette when I was first setting everything up because one, it was recommended by a lot of artists, and two, it was just this beautiful deep uh, greenish teal color on its own that was really, really pretty. But after a couple months of painting, I find that I never used it for anything because it's really unnatural looking on its own. And I took it off of my palette and it stayed off of my palette for quite some time, probably uh, until I came back around to my color spotlight series. And when I featured it in my color spotlight series, I was like, Hey, wait a second. This color is amazing. It makes these awesome combinations. And how has it been off my palette all this time? So I promptly added it back to my palette where it has resided ever since. With your cooler and mid-tone yellows, it is going to make a very bright, unnaturalistic green color. Then getting down to quinacridone gold, this is where I needed this color to be on my mixing list because with thalo green, it makes the absolute most perfect shade of green ever. If you've been around this channel, you know my thoughts on that. And uh, you can probably see into the future of this video just a little bit. Uh, moving on into some of the other colors, we get a nice deep olivey green when we mix it with the quinacridone burnt orange. We've got a stunning shade of purple mixed with carmine. We've got some nice bright tealish blues when we mix it with our blue colors and mixed with neutral tint, it makes a super deep foresty green that I absolutely love. 
Another surprising mixture on this sheet is actually when it's mixed with the burnt sienna from Daniel Smith. The granulation patterns are actually very, very similar to some of the Primatec colors. The Primatecs are more granulating and arguably more beautiful than this one here, but if you don't have the money or space on your palette for a specialty color that does not mix, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the video, having a phthalo green with this burnt sienna from Daniel Smith will make you a nice granulating green that has a brown granulation that settles out of the wash. All right, everyone, coming in at number one, many of you have probably already guessed it, and uh, there've already been some hints that I'm sure have given it away, even if you didn't know going into this list what my number one spot would be, and that is Sap Green using the old formula from Daniel Smith. Now, before you get mad at me, please know how hard I tried to find a replacement for this color. I have been searching for months, if not you know, the past year, when I knew that I could no longer get this color. Cricket, you are driving me insane. Oh my gosh, I've been trying to record the same clip for like five or 10 minutes already. She keeps playing with stuff all over the room and making noise. Um, anyway, if you hear in the background, I apologize, but this sap green is made from phthalo green and quinacridone gold, the original pigment, not the newer mixes. And that's the reason it's no longer available on the market. But I promise, I promise, I promise I'm going to show you even some footage later on. I thought I found a replacement for it. I thought it was perfect, but it let me down in the most painful way possible. So coming back to this love, uh, I have never felt so strongly about a color in my life as I feel about sap green. It is the perfect shade of green straight out of the tube. You don't need to mix it with anything. If you do want to alter it, you can just add more of phthalo green or more of quinacridone gold and it mixes up and down on that, you know, value scale between yellow and blue. When you mix it with reds, you get these beautiful earthy brown colors. When you mix them with blues, you get these rich, deep greens. Mixed with naphthamide maroon, you get this gorgeous, almost kind of umber violet-y color, like a raw umber violet. And um, they're just so vibrant and so beautiful. And it is, to me, the perfect green. Now they did discontinue this color well before they discontinued the quinacridone gold and I only ever owned one tube of this in my entire life. If you know anywhere I can find more, please let me know. I probably need a, a helpline for how much I love this color, but uh, in the meantime, I do have both phthalo green and quinacridone gold to mix my own versions of this and I actually even did a video on that that I'll link up in the right hand corner. If you never had a chance to use this color straight out of the tube, but you have phthalo green and you have quinacridone gold, I highly mix mixing them up right now and seeing what you can get out of them because they are beautiful. Now I promise to show you my near miss attempt at what I thought was going to be the perfect replacement for sap green. I was so excited the other day. I thought I finally found it. I even posted on Instagram. I was like, guys, I found it. It's perfect. It's beautiful. And that is Coors Sap Green. Now out of the tube, these colors look incredibly similar. The Coors version granulates more, but the hue is right on the money. And I was like, oh, I found it. My search is over. It's great. I'm going to just go ahead and do this top five greens and I'm just going to mix the Coors Sap Green. It's going to be fine. And then when I mixed it, I was incredibly underwhelmed and I was super, super, I was like, this can't be right. This isn't the color that I'm remembering and the, it's not the shades that it mixes. So then I went back and mixed the sap green and lo and behold, all of the mixtures with the core are just really, really flat and a little bit sad next to the Daniel Smith counterparts. And I think all of that can be attributed to quinacridone gold because it just has this luminous quality that's so perfect. So I promise I tried. I have this, I'm showing it to you. If you still like this color, you can go out and get it. It still works great out of the tube, but um, I didn't find it the having the same impact. So before you go, I did wanna go ahead and just take a couple moments to talk about a couple other colors that didn't make it on the list. Um, again, these aren't honorable mentions, but I did wanna kind of address the fact that I tried so hard to look for colors to make this list more well-balanced because I know a lot of my favorite greens are very earthy greens or very dark greens, and that's just my personal preference. I don't like leaf green. I don't like bright lime or neon greens. It's just not me. It's not who I am. I do have a green gold from Daniel Smith that's not here, um, but that's very close when it mixes. Like the mixes that it gets is very similar to sap green, so that's why I thought it would be a little bit redundant. Um, the Sennelier Forest 
screen here, the really dark one in the bottom right hand corner is a gorgeous, gorgeous color that I really, really love. However, it felt really, really similar to Perlin Green and Thalo Green. It was right in between the two and the mixes were right in between the two. So it's a beautiful color. I thought it would be redundant to put on the list. And the one I really wanted to address because I know a lot of you really, really love it is Green Gold um, PY129. However, this color is beautiful. It makes really nice browns, really nice oranges, and I think it is a perfectly fine addition to any palette. However, I just felt it was way too yellow for me to personally and good conscience put it on this list. So that is why it did not make an appearance, and I know a lot of you guys like it. Um, and I think M. Graham's version might be a little bit more green than this uh, one from Core is. I don't know. I haven't used M. Graham's, but anyway... That is my list. That is my top five. Um, as I mentioned about halfway through this video, I love sap green, perlene green, and thalo green. I use them all about equally in my everyday average painting. The other two uh, slots at four and five were a little odd and a little bit stretched, but I really look forward to looking at that White Knights PG-8 and doing some light fastness tests on it because it is such a gorgeous color. And I would love to know what your favorite greens are. So be sure to let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to hearing about them. So next week, just to let you know, I'm not going to be able to put out a top five video because I'm going to be traveling for uh, a convention in Southern California. So if you'd like to come say hi, I'll be at Anime LA in Ontario, California. It's my first ever Southern California convention. So hope to meet some of you out there and make sure you mention that you know me from YouTube uh, and I'll have a little something extra for you if you stop by the table. Um, I am trying really hard to put out that big uh, vegan sustainability watercolor guide that I've been promising for so long. And if I can get it done in time, I will do that for you as the video next week. However, there won't be a second one. If something happens and I'm really not able to record that video, I'll go ahead and make the top five and save the vegan watercolor video for when I get back. I just feel bad that I've been talking about this video for so long. I want to get it out there and and to answer some of your questions that you guys have had. I'm really glad you enjoyed the Colors of Nature video last week. Anyway, I am rambling, so I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I will see you next week, and until then, happy painting.